Hello, in this video I'll be explaining problem 1 from the Gold Division of the 2020 USACO Open. I've written up a more rigorous and more mathematical solution in the form of a PDF, and you can check it out in the video description, but it's pretty confusing, um, and you don't really need to read that. So here's the problem. Tired of a stubborn cowlick, Farmer John decides to get a haircut. He has n, where n is between 1 and 10 to the 5 strands of hair arranged in a line, and strand i is initially a i micrometers long, where a i is between 0 and n. Ideally, he wants his hair to be monotonically increasing in length, so he defines the badness of his hair as the number of inversions, pairs i, j, such that i is less than j and a i is greater than a j. For each of j equals 0 to n minus 1, Farmer John would like to know the badness of his hair if all strands with length greater than j are decreased to length exactly j. So then they list uh, input and output formats and an example case. I'd suggest going over the problem again and trying to find maybe a brute force solution just to get a feel for the problem and what it's asking for. Okay, first, a side note. We'll be finding some prefix sums in this solution. If you don't know what they are, prefix sums basically tell you the first sum of the first n elements of an array. We'll be working with prefix sums on a dynamic array, so an array that can change, and that requires Fenwick trees. Fenwick trees are a data structure for finding prefix sums of dynamic arrays. They support queries and updates in O log n time. But don't worry, you don't have to understand them right now. I might make a video on it later. So the constraints are that n is 10 to the 5 at most, so we need to do n log n or better. First, we're going to have to draw a diagram. Right, so we have hairs of length um, 5, 2, 3, 3, and 0. We wish to count the number of inversions or the badness of Farmer John's hair if he shortens all hairs to height at most k. So let's assume k equals 3 for this example. To count this, we observe that this is satisfied only if the right hair is shorter than the left hair, before the cut, because otherwise you can't get an inversion. And it's pretty easy to prove this to ourselves. If we look at two hairs where the right one is longer than the left one, then it, even if we cut like in all possible locations, we can't get an inversion. Um, either we're going to get the right hair is longer than the left one, or they're going to be the same height. So we have to have the right hair is shorter than the left hair, because if you cut here or you cut here, there's going to be an inversion. So in summary, we need the right hair to be shorter than the left hair in any inversion pairs. Moreover, the right hair has to be strictly shorter than k. If it's longer than or equal to k, then both get shortened to the same height. So if we look over here, so if k is less than the height of the rightmost hair, we're not going to get an inversion because both hairs are going to be the same height afterwards. And if k is equal to, um, they're also going to be the same height. So only if k is greater than the height of the right hair is this going to happen, because that's going to preserve the relative height of these two uh, hairs. So how do we count this? First, we notice that if we increment k, all previous inversions stay, and we might add a few new ones. So if we increment k to 4, for example, uh, k was originally 3, we increment it to 4. We notice that all previous inversions stay. So the previous ones were 0 with 1, um, 0 with 4, 1 with 4, 2 with 4, and 3 with 4, right? But now we also add a few new ones. We add 0 with 2 and 0 with 3. These didn't happen before because k was the same height as hairs 2 and 3. So we're going to call these new inversions. Um, the ones in this case are 0, 2, and 0, 3. They're the ones we get when we increment k to a certain value. So we'll be counting new inversions being added for every k. Since they accumulate as k increases, when we produce the answers, they will be monotonically increasing, and we can just add the previous answers to the current new inversions for k. We can count new inversions by noticing that an inversion is new if when the right hair is first less than k. When the right hair is equal to k, so as we saw in this example, when k is equal to 3, there's not going to be inversions with 2 and 3 as the right hairs. But when we increment k to 4, there's going to be inversions here, because they're now shorter than k. So the new inversions for height um, 4 are going to be with the hairs of length 3. So for every hair, we just count of how many inversions that hair is the rightmost hair of, and add that to the new inversions for that height. So, let's do the example. I think examples make these explanations much easier to understand. When the cut height is 1, we're going to add all inversions with hair length 0 on the right. So that's going to add 4 inversions, because this hair is of length 0, and it's going to add all the inversions to its left. So that's going to add 4. When the cut height is 2, we add all inversions with hairs of length 1 on the right. There are none, so we don't add anything. So we still have 4 inversions. When it's 3, we add all inversions with hairs of length 2 on the right. So this is going to add 1, because there's one hair with 2 on the right. So this is going to add 1, because we notice there's one hair with 
height 2, and we're just going to add the inversion that it is a part of, 0, 1. So that's going to add 1 to our inversions. It becomes 5. When it's 4, we had all inversions with length 3 on the right. Um, there's going to be two inversions here because 0, 2 and 0, 3. So that's going to add two new inversions, and that's going to become 7. So 4 is the last height that we consider because we know that j goes up to n minus 1. Um, and this is going to be our answer, 0, 4, 4, 5, 7. And if we look at the answers, that's going to be right. Okay, so how are we going to count these inversions, though? Um, we're going to count them using prefix sums on a dynamic array, using updated as we traverse every pair updated it as we traverse each hair from left to right. We update the array such that it stores the number of hairs with length i at index i. So what am I talking about? Let's do the example again. Okay, so we're going to traverse the hairs from left to right. So we start at zero. Um, and also, we need to keep our dynamic array. This is going to store the frequencies of each height we've seen so far. So this is height zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So initially, we get to index zero. We see this is height five. We know there's going to be no inversions here because there are no hairs to the left of this one. So we just add one um, to our count of hairs of length five, and we move on. So now we're at index one. This is height two. So we look at the prefix sum of all hairs uh, that are shorter than or just as tall as two. Um, and why? Because the remaining hairs are going to be taller than it. So there's one hair to its left, but none of them are shorter or just as tall. So we know that exactly one of them is going to be taller than it. So one minus zero is going to be equal to one, new inversion. This one is for one hair to its left, and this zero is for no hairs are shorter. So we know that we're going to have one new inversion for cut height 3. And notice it's 3, not 2, because um, we have an off by 1 somewhere. Uh, it's, it's just like rewatch re one of those sections, OK? So the new inversions for cut height 3 are going to be incremented. That's going to be 1. Um, and then we're going to update our dynamic array to say that um, we've seen a hair of height 2. And so we're going to increment it. So next hair, um, hair of height. 3. This is going to be index 2. Uh, we're going to take the prefix sum uh, over here to see how many hairs to its left are shorter or just as tall. So we see that taking this prefix sum is going to give us 1. There's one hair to its left which is going to be shorter or just as tall. Subtracting that from 2 is, uh, is going to tell us that one of them is taller. So 2 minus 1 is 1. We know there's one hair to the left of this current one that is taller. Um, so we know that there's one new inversion for this one. So we add 1 to cut height 4, uh, which is 3 plus 1, height of the hair. OK, and then we can update our dynamic array. All right, next one. Um, we're going to look at index 3 now. This one also has height 3. Uh, we take our prefix sum, tells us that there's two hairs to its left, which are just as tall or shorter. Um, and subtracting that from 3 is going to tell us that there are exactly one hair. Well, there is exactly one hair to its left, which is taller. Um, and therefore, we're going to add 1 to our new inversions for cut height. Four. Okay, and we'll get to our final hair, which is our hair of length zero. Um, our hair of length zero. Uh, it's going to take the prefix sum of nothing because it's it's length zero, so it's going to take the prefix sum over here, and that's going to tell us that there are no hairs to its left which are shorter than or just as tall as it. And this makes sense because it's um, height zero. So there's obviously going to be no hairs that are shorter than or just as tall because there's no hairs with length zero. Um, so there's four to its left. Uh, there are, none of them are shorter, so all of them are taller. And that's going to tell us that there's four new inversions for cut height one, um, because zero plus one is one. So yeah, we now have our new inversion uh, update array. And to construct our answer, we're just going to start with from zero. And then we're going to add four, because we know there's four new inversions for cut height one. Then we're going to add zero. Then we're going to add one. Then we're going to add two. And then we're done. So this is our answer, 04457. And we've computed it using prefix sums and some smart reasoning. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, taking prefix sum of our dynamic array requires a Fenwick tree, which again, I'm not going to get too much into. Um, however, this data structure is really, really useful for prefix sums on dynamic arrays. And therefore, it's also useful for range sum queries in dynamic arrays. So for those of you sticking around to the end, you're probably wondering, how did I do on the US Open? I competed in the gold division and it was pretty hard so I didn't get any problems, but if you want to see a time lapse of me solving the problems, or actually solving none of the problems, here you go.
Okay, yeah, that was pretty. That was a pretty sad. That was a pretty sad contest. But that's all I have for this explanation. And I might do a code walkthrough in a separate video. I'm not going to do it here. But I think the code's pretty intuitive. And if you understand this explanation in this video, uh, matching it to the code shouldn't be any problem. So, yeah. Um, please take a look at my written up solution in the description. Please subscribe if you like this type of content and leave any feedback in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.